Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. So very good evening to you guys. Um, today we are going to talk about a very important and useful reaction that is our Strecker reaction. Okay, so Strecker reaction is uh, you will see the utility of this reaction. So basically, you should remember whenever you are studying a name reaction, you should remember how you have to uh, you how or what is prepared, what are the reagents that are required. So we can prepare alpha amino nitriles. Okay, uh, starting with um, basically your aldehydes right from starting from aldehydes we can mix uh, alpha amino nitriles and the basic reaction is basically you're adding potassium cyanide let's say and ammonium chloride and you get this compound this is our alpha amino nit nitrile okay the cn group is called the nitrile group and then we have um, uh, nh2 at the alpha position uh, that is at the alpha carbon and then if you can hydrolyze this you can al also get a carboxylic acid right so this is the basic striker reaction and the mechanism is also very simple if i look at the me mechanism this is our aldehyde okay we have a hydrogen over here and uh, so what happens is basically your oxygen it has lone pair of electrons so it will attack this hydrogen okay it's basically nh4cl exists as nh4 plus right so this oxygen will abstract one hydrogen and once it abstracts that hydrogen will get nh uh, will get this compound over here this intermediate that is oxonium ion is formed okay um oxygen uh, with a positive charge is basically oxonium ion and once this oxygen uh, in the first step abstracts this hydrogen ammonia is generated so this ammonia is going to attack this carbonyl carbon like i have shown with the arrow and what we are going to get is this intermediate over here okay this is the intermediate that we are going to get right now once this intermediate is formed it, it is it is like a reversible intermediate it can exist in this form or in the other form so if it exists in this form what will happen is basically again oxonium ion is generated one of the hydrogens from nh3 positive it gets transferred to this oh and it forms oxonium ion okay and oxonium ion being a very good leaving group this nitrogen has lone pair of electrons it will donate its lone pair of electrons and this oh2 positive group will leave as water right so water will be eliminated and finally we'll get your this intermediate over here and then you have cn minus in the solution that means we are adding potassium cyanide so we have cn minus in the solution and the cn minus is then going to attack this electrophilic carbon over here and finally we are going to get our alpha amino nitrile now one thing that you should uh, notice over here um, being organic chemist and being at master's level you should always look at the chirality now if you look at this molecule we will have a hydrogen over here so now we have four different groups attached to the carbon that means this carbon is going to be chiral okay now the only problem that comes with striker reaction is the chirality the reaction is very simple you can easily um, you know get an alpha amino nitrile or a carboxylic acid basically from your uh, aldehyde but the only problem is this racemic thing so this gives us a racemic alpha amino nitrile which is not useful for us because when you do organic synthesis you want the pure product whether it should be r s or a diastereomer it does not matter but, but it should be a pure product so how can we get basically our asymmetric reaction how can we get a pure enantiomer of the striker reaction there are two uh, basically widely used uh, techniques one is using chiral auxiliary like you all, all must have heard about chiral auxiliaries like camphor your evans auxiliary it's a very famous auxiliary chiral auxiliary um, then we have basically your um, eight phenyl menthol right so what these compounds do is they they act they are very pure they are themselves a pure uh, enantiomer okay so once if let's say we get an enantiomer and we have another enantiomer like the chiral auxiliary is a pure enantiomer so let's say we get two enantiomers and we are some somehow able to conjugate those two enantiomers to chiral auxiliary chiral auxiliaries so then they become diastereomers and then they can be easily separated so this is one strategy the other strategy is to use catalytic compounds which are themselves uh, you know useful in asymmetric synthesis like recently you might have heard about proline catalyzed asymmetric uh, reactions asymmetric aldol reaction not recently i mean it had been excuse me done a long time before but you must have heard, heard about them as well okay so these are the two basic general methods by which we can produce or we can uh, carry out asymmetric striker reaction now coming on to one of the one of the steps so if you see over here this is our 
one of the chiral auxiliaries it's called r phenyl glycinol auxiliary okay r phenyl glycinol so this over this compound over here is called r phenyl glycinol okay um so you can see this is a very pure enantiomer uh, this is the only enantiomer that we have we can like this is the pure enantiomer the pure r enantiomer and we are adding our aldehyde so once we add the aldehyde what forms imine forms okay because we have nh2 and you all of you know if nh2 reacts with any aldehyde uh, imine formation takes place imine formation is nothing but c double bond n any compound any functional group with c double bond n is called imine so you can see over here uh, imine is generated okay now you are adding this reagent TMSCN. This is trimethyl silyl cyanide. Okay, the reagent is trimethyl silyl cyanide. So basically, we have silicon. To the silicon, we have three methyl groups, and then we have our nitrile group. This is the structure of trimethyl cyanide. Trimethyl silyl cyanide. So TMSCN is trimethyl silyl cyanide, and it's a CN um, group. Okay, it, it gives CN. So this CN is going to come and attack. CN minus is going to come and attack this carbon over here. And we are going to get our alpha amino nitrile. But if you see, um, see, so basically there are two diastereomers. You can see, right? These are the two diastereomers. One is this type diastereomer over here, this, and one is this type diastereomer over here. So you get two diastereomers. Instead of getting two enantiomers, which are almost impossible to separate because they have same physical properties and chemical properties, uh, because of this pure R. Uh, chiral auxiliary that is our phenyl glycinol we have got two diastereomers because this will remain r this portion will remain r for both the ones but in one position we'll get s and in one position we'll get r so that will make it basically diastereom diastereomeric and then the diastereomers can be easily separated uh, we under so we are adding your uh, your fluoride donor or your hcl and with that basically your deprotection of the oh group takes place because when we are adding TMSCN, the OH group gets protected. So we deprotect it and then we carry out chromatographic separation to separate the both these diastereomers. Okay, so you can do that in, in chemistry lab with a co column chromatography. You can separate the diastereomers with the help of column chromatography and we will get the diastereomers. Then you can deprotect the chiral auxiliary. That means you can remove this chiral auxiliary, auxiliary late, later to get the pure R or S enantiomer, whatever is needed. But what is important over here is that you should be aware of the reagents also. So this TMSCN, you have to be careful because it gives a very wonderful and sweet gas that is hydrogen cyanide. So you have to be careful when handling TMSCN because if you swallow even a little bit of TMSCN, it could be fatal because in the body it reacts and gives hydrogen cyanide, which all of you know, it's a really sweet gas. Okay, I'm just kidding. Like seriously, it's very dangerous hydrogen cyanide, right? So let's talk about their synthesis. Like where do we actually use Strecker synthesis? So you can see this example over here. If you have to synthesize seven methoxy benzolactam, uh, which is an antibiotic, what we are doing is we are using R phenyl glycinol. That was our chiral auxiliary, and we are using trimethyl silyl cyanide, right? TMSCN, and we are using TBAF, which is a deprotecting group. Okay. So you can see we have got this particular um, compound. Then we are adding HCl and later on, if you see over here, we are deprotecting it. Okay, uh, the deprotection is done by this reagent PDOH2 carbon H2. This is the reagent which leads to deprotection of this R phenyl glycinol group. The R phenyl glycinol group which we have introduced to make diastereomers that can be later removed with the help of PDOH2 car on, on carbon basically uh, hydrogenation. Okay, so by hydrogenation, we can remove that group and you can see we have got this product over here right uh, if you see the next step it will make things more clearer so this is the aldehyde we have and we are using r phenyl glycinol that is our chiral auxiliary uh, if you use that chiral auxiliary this is the product we get like the, the diastereomer is, the diastereomer is formed once this diastereomer is formed we can separate it with the help of column chromatography because diastereomers are easily to uh, can be separated easily because they have different um, properties but while enantiomers don't have the similar uh, you know physical and chemical properties once they're separated uh, then we can later deprotect with the help of this reagent okay that is hydrogenation on par paradigm um, you know charged on carbon so with the help of that we can deprotect that group so you see there's deprotection taking place and finally we get this compound over here right so this is all about your uh, striker reaction and how you can use it in the asymmetric method because in net it's more it's more related to the asymmetry so remember whenever you get r glycinol 
just remember one dynasty number will be dominated over the other and you can get whatever product you want right so i hope you found this video useful if you did please like this video give it a big thumbs up and also share it with your friends thank you so much for watching